Um, so this paper is about confronting contradictions that exist within social movements um, and exploring how people that are divided through radically different positions within colonial ca capitalist Aotearoa New Zealand can be in solidarity with each other <coughs> when organising and struggling for change. Um, this tension will be interrogated through student and rangatahi solidarity with Tamaki Housing Group, which is a group of state housing tenants um, that are fighting against the removal of state homes and eviction of tenants and the redevelopment of their community, Glen Innes. Um, <coughs> in the community, there is a displacement of people from place. However, there is also a displacement of signifiers to define the process of gentrification by developers and policy makers, which attempt to suture the violence of gentrification. This covering up is, is a common theme, even within the radical left, um, which must be confronted if we are to avoid reproducing that which we attempt to resist. Um, Tamaki Housing Group, a group of predominantly Māori and Pacifica queer Formed in 2011 after state housing tenants received a letter from Housing New Zealand about the redevelopment, which would involve removing the state housing stock from Glen Innes and replacing the stock through mixed tenure redevelopment. This re redevelopment discourse attempts to cover over the process of gentrification through the language of diversity, affordable housing and community consultation. This follows a history of displacement from the violence of colonialism to urban redevelopment, where people were dispossessed from their means of subsistence and community. A history of dispossession is built over, redeveloped, covered up, through the silencing of resistance and the drowning, out of the, of, and the drowning noise of the colonial capitalist state. Resistance, however, even when muted, has the power to break with us. Student activists, predominantly from the University of Auckland, have been supporting Tamaki Housing Group through direct action, occupation and protests against the removal of the houses and the eviction of tenants, but also creating art, information campaigns and designing leaflets. Navigating a space in between the university and community resistance involves working through contradictions and the uneasy divisions that prevent solidarity from being actualised. Today I'm not speaking on behalf of the tenants involved in Tamaki Housing Group as a social movement. This is an attempt to move away from the plethora of academic research which speaks on behalf of others, philosophising the poor and placing their stories in inaccessible academic journals. Instead, this is an examination of the position of students and academics and the possibilities of solidarity. To avoid becoming a part of the dominant logic that underpins redevelopment and glenliness, a logic whereby stakeholders speak on behalf of the community, as a student involved in organising with the community, there must be a performance of solidarity which does not displace inequality but instead confronts it. This paper will explore the problems with academic star studying the marginalised as an object, then discuss how divisions create a distance preventing solidarity and conclude by looking at the example of Glenis, the problems and po possibilities. Academics in the social science sciences will make a claim to a sense of radicality, speak about social movements and theorise about marginality, however often do so from a distance to the material reality of those they speak for. Struggles on the margin towards emancipatory change, Linda Tui Smith argues, can become oppressive when the hegemonic intellectuals decide what counts as legitimate knowledge. Academics will at times speak for others without reflection of their own position within oppression and are unwilling to move beyond the university to oppose hierarchy. When you speak for an other, it prevents that other from having a voice, which reinforces the discourse of those in power that we desire to, to disband. The poor, or the marginalised in general, become an object of study, as though they cannot think their situation, and in this are ren rendered voiceless. Roncia states, that what occurs in this situation is a discourse that allows one to speak for others that cancels out the place and the subject of its own speech. Those that are seen to have a, the legitimate voice, the politician, the developer, the academic, possess speech because their voice is legitimised. The struggle for equality itself can silence inequality. In a situation where the uncounted people of society are subjugated to silence, speaking for others sometimes involves silence in order to enable the space for others to speak. Wansia critiques the intellectual gesture of the academic in solidarity, who uses theory to suppress the noise of revolt. 
Spivak calls for a need to learn from below through the infinite patience, which does not speak, but instead listens to the silence. To think what is to below is to think what is not included in the situation. To not speak for others is if they do not have the ability to speak for themselves. The point is not for academics to be silent about social issues or to explain the unintelligible speech of marginalised communities to those in power. It is instead a to in, it is to instead attack institutions of power and domination that disqualify the voices of communities and in that process break apart the systematic processes that discourage communities from speaking for themselves. When there is no critical reflection of your own position and the other is constantly used to reinforce hierarchy and domination, it diminishes the possibility of emancipatory politics. Academics often speak from a distance. However, this distance is maintained by a system we all exist in, which attempts to divide people into separate and hierarchical categories. Monsieur argues that communities are divided into parts by a police logic, a logic which is in opposition to politics and assigns particular roles and identities. The logic of division has been essential to the redevelopment of cleanliness, which divides those that desire the affordable housing that is going to be built in place of the state housing with the community struggling against the destruction of their community. This logic also exists in preventing solidarity between groups within the supposed housing crisis, students and academics included. The promise of affordable housing for first home buyers is marketed at young families and professionals which wish to embark on the property ladder. This includes graduates that are made to believe that their investment they made in their degree will provide them with the means to, to consume property. Instead of critiquing the housing market that continues to profit from redevelopment and reforms, state housing tenants become the target and distraction. The possibility of solidarity with and public support for state housing tenants is delegitimised through the logic of division which separates people. To move beyond these division, divisions involves a confrontation with the division itself, with the role in which we are distributed in our own place in legitimating and reproducing it. Solidarity can be seen as a symbolic <coughs> unity between different people on the basis of universal commonality. Solidarity, however, is a result of the struggle to confront inequality. It is not placing yourself in another's place to understand them. It involves confronting your own place first. Most of the students, artists and young professionals involved in supporting Tamaki Housing Group are Pākehā and middle class. The very categories of people seen as desirable tenants to move into the redeveloped cleanliness area. In order to organise with others, there is a need not only to recognise our position, but then to attempt to break with the divisions that prevent us from being in solidarity. This begins with the academic, the student, critiquing the contradictions of the university as an institution that maintains colonialism and capitalism. The possibility of solidarity with community external to the university is in a willingness to let go of the identity of the student, a category that exists in the university but does not belong. Confronting yourself as a student or academic, then moving away from these categories, also requires confronting the other, being involved in struggles with those that make you question your own legitimacy to speak. When students get involved in struggles with others, they are supposed to be distanced from. It cannot be understood by the state or the developer. Students in solidarity with Tamaki Housing Group are able to do acts such as Occupy House and get arrested because of the consequences of these acts. Prison, eviction, are minimised by the privilege of their identity. In saying this, however, students are not necessary, necessary in the situation, as the Koya of Tamaki Housing Group are always on the front line, willing to do anything to protect their community. Students cannot offer a complete understanding of the situation of state housing tenants, but they can offer their body support and access to resources. Feeling unease, being uncomfortable, is a necessary part of organising with others. This does not mean that change starts with the self, but that a necessary part of social movements is recognising the inequalities that exist in the struggle for equality with others. The dialectic of solidarity is that while the universal while it is universal to particular struggles, it can be used to reinforce the inequality it desires to eliminate. 
This antagonism exists because solidarity with others is never a given, but a social relation.